you know, our parents kind of had, on both sides of the family, had their share of those things that they wanted to shelter us from. So um, we were always around really nice people, good people, people with the same value system. Well, I like talking to people. You know, when you're on a film set or you're, you're just in a place where you know you're going to be with people for a few days. And sometimes people are kind of shy and they don't know what to talk about or they don't talk or, or whatever. But I would always ask people about themselves. Where are you from? You know, what do you like to do? And um, I guess a lot of people just aren't used to being asked questions like that. But I always saw mom and dad do that. I saw them interact with people that way. They were always interested in what people had to say, especially mom. Dad was too, but, um, but, but mom was a really good listener and she could really um, ask people about themselves and they would open up to her. And um, dad was more kind of more of the showman in a way, you know, I mean, he was more the leader of the pack and everything. He, he had those same really great social skills, but he could kind of just change everything and bring everybody along with them where mom was just more willing to be open and let's see what everybody's going to do. So those elements I brought with me into my life. And I just remember that's how I made friends it would just seem like a natural way to be. That's why, the way I thought you were supposed to be. Interested in people, asking them questions. And then when people would, they would turn around and ask me a question about my life, um, I'd tell them my dad was a baseball player, if, if it was appropriate to say so. Really? And then that would get a conversation going. Who did he play for? He's on baseball cards? Oh, I might have one. You know, those kinds of things where you can find some common ground with people, that's to me the most important thing. Find common ground. You ask questions until you can find something like, oh yeah, I used to live there. Oh yeah, I've been to that place and I found it really great. How about you? What did you think of it? You didn't like it so much? Well, maybe it was a bad day, you know, or maybe I was there on a good day or maybe I was there on a bad But um, I guess those are the influences. You know, with Nanny and Papa, you know, they were just always there you know, in my mind, in my life, um, I'd have to How think. How did the way that, say, Nanny lived, you know, influence you, when, especially after her husband died, yeah. her papa died? Yeah, well, it's probably influenced me, you know, I, I can see more now how it's influenced me because I've been single for so long. And she was married for 40 years, and then her husband died, and then, then she lived by herself for 40 years after that. And um, she... Uh, Live by herself very well. I mean, she was she always she was a nurse, so she always struck me as very independent. When Papa died, I remember she told me that Dad said, "Mother, you should sell both of your houses, the one on the bay and the one in town, and move into an apartment." And she said, "I don't want to move into an apartment because nobody's going to come visit a little old lady in an apartment all by herself. I am moving over the bay, and that's what I'm going to do because she wanted to be on the water in her little cottage." on the bay and everybody came to see her because everybody else wanted to be there too and she knew that and she liked people and she liked to cook and she liked people to be around and I think that's just influenced me more than I've realized but I was always so proud of her I'm like oh, your grandmother you should see mine let me take you to see my grandmother <laughs> she lives by herself on the bay she's a great cook she's funny she's active and you know she just had so much energy and just she was just fun. She was a real individual, and she was strong, and she was smart, and she knew how to do everything. She was a nurse, so she knew how to take care of people, and she was a hell of a cook. I wish I could do that, but I can do some stuff, but <laughs> not as much. But I guess that's more of an, inf that's, yeah. Just seeing the way that she lived is, you know, I just, thought that was a great way to live. I remember asking her one time, oh gosh, several years ago, I said, well, how did it feel to like have these two sons that were playing baseball? Weren't you so proud of them going to the major leagues? She says, no, I wanted them to make something of themselves. I didn't want them to do that. Yeah. I said, really? Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't remember, you know, like at Nanny and Papa's house or even at Nanny's house mm -hmm. that she had pictures hanging on the wall of 
dad and her uncle Frank in doing baseball no. stuff. I mean, she had pictures of them young. Yeah, and, but they you know, weren't hanging pictures. on the wall. Yeah. And she, I remember she had those, um, kind of some paintings, but they were prints on the wall. I remember those, but I don't really remember. You're right. I don't remember any yeah. kind of family pictures. Sometimes they were, uh, you remember that desk that she had in the living room? Mm -hmm. And she had a piece of glass on top and she had oh, yeah. like their wedding pictures and she had she had pictures flat on that under that glass mm -hmm. there. But and she may have had like their wedding pictures in eight by ten frames, yeah. but but there was never yeah, anything been, else. And yeah. Well, what are your memories <laughs> of like Papa? You know, our grandfather. Gosh, it's just kind of the silent, well dressed, always had a hat on his head background person always there but not saying much mm -hmm. and then really most of the time I remember him not feeling well yeah. just kind of catching his breath and, and because he had emphysema mm -hmm. and um, just having a hard time breathing but you don't really you know just he was the first person who was the closest to me who died at whose funeral that I attended but we weren't that close I mean we weren't close he was just he was my grandfather but, um, yeah, it was just kind of a distant relationship in a way, just mm -hmm. because he was quiet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I loved him, and he was just always there, but there was not much interaction uh -huh. there that I can remember, uh -huh. but it was fine. Nanny, was, nanny was kind of the, the life of the party, the, the, uh, the front person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Uncle Frank, I loved Uncle Frank. He was just so sweet, and he was so nice, and... I just remember him just being kind of this happy guy that when we were younger and we'd go to their house and we were with the cousins and everything, he was just friendly and happy and glad to see us. And he was like dad in a lot of ways, you know, the way they talked. And I really loved talking to Uncle Frank after dad died because we had all that time by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I would go visit him at his house and we would talk for hours. And it was just the two of us. There was no family, nobody else around. It was just the two of us. And oh, it was wonderful. So he told me a lot of stories that, you know, maybe Dad hadn't told. So, because Uncle Frank liked to talk about a lot of the things that he'd been through. Mm -hmm. And I, th I don't think Dad liked to do that quite as much. It was more like trying to get that information out of him. But, but uh, yeah, Uncle Frank was just a, he was just a nice guy to me. I just really, really enjoyed and, being and with so him. And he had some baseball paraphernalia. In his yes. One in particular. Do you remember what that <laughs> thing was? Um, the baseball bat? The baseball lamp with the balls? Oh, I forgot about or that. Or the... Um, the um, life size figure of him, yeah, by the bar, by the wet bar. Yeah. <laughs> yes. sure, yeah, the life -size and he figure. still had it when I went to see him one time. He, did you, were you with me when we went to see that? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he still had that. He still, I think he still had everything. He had baseball pictures all over the walls. And, you know, we had that too when we were living on Fountain Blue. Mom had put dad's pictures up too. I love that. Mm -hmm. I thought that was great. I don't remember, I was remember being around him a little bit, not much, but I just remember Nanny didn't like him. He drank, he was rough, you know, and Papa was refined, and he was the older brother and all that, but I don't remember being around Uncle Jack that much, but I do remember those, her talking about those influences of somebody who drinks, or they're rough, or they're like in, you know, baseball and all that stuff, and she didn't like that, but that's really all I know. I can't be mm -hmm. very helpful yeah, there. I only remember meeting him like once or twice. I yeah. remember he looked almost like a younger papa. A younger papa, I yeah. know, I know. Yeah, they looked a lot uh, Yeah, alike. they looked, he, he was huskier, I think. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember much about him, but uh -huh. I just remember she didn't really like him that much. But <laughs> Papa and uh, Uncle Jack had a sister, Aunt Belle, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember going to her house on Christmas mornings when we were little, and we'd go over there after church at St. Joan of Arc's, we'd walk from Nanny's house on Tuttle Avenue down to Wisconsin Avenue, and we'd be at Aunt Belle's house, and the walls in her house are very dark, and she did she make Manhattans for, I think so. for um, or high, some kind of highball for them, and I remember one year... Everybody left the room, and you just went <laughs> and passed out on the sofa. <laughs> I was pretty young. I don't think I knew what I was yeah. thinking. I think you were four. I mean, you were little. I, I don't really remember that much. I just remember them talking about yeah, it. Talking about that. Yeah. 
<laughs> and she would play piano. And she yeah, was always, uh, she was great. Uh, and she looked smiling. like a little female papa. Yeah. Same blue eyes. And mm-hmm. yeah, so that was, those are good memories, you know, going over there. I had my aunt, my godmother. She was 12 years old when I was born. And, you know, she was always like my, my, uh, yeah, like a little mommy or a big sister. So she was great. She babysat for us all the time. She always wanted to take us places with her. And, oh gosh, yeah, she was, you know, a teenager. I remember sitting on the floor of Nanny's house. And, you know, she, maybe she was 15 or 16 at this time, but she had all of her girlfriends over and they were playing. Uh, Elvis Presley's record ain't nothing but a hound dog on her little record player with the 45s and they were all jitterbugging together in the living room with their hair and curlers or little pin curls I thought oh I can't wait to be a teenager this is gonna be so much fun and then one day I remember sitting in the front yard and waiting for her to come home from school and you know Nanny says go sit in the yard she'll be home soon and I'm sitting up there and here comes this car down the road and I'm watching watching and Kaka is sitting on the front on the hood she's sitting on the hood and she's you know like this and they come they pull up right in front of the house and she slides off into the yard and I thought that was the coolest thing I've ever seen (laughs) my idol oh gosh I love being in her room and she had all these stuffed animals on the bed and an autograph dog that you know those those uh cotton dogs that you could write on it was like a cast you know I remember seeing that and then um she ended up going to New York to become a, an airline stewardess for United, and that was so glamorous, too. And, yeah, that was great. Kaka, she's always been around, you know. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember Mom saying that Dad was in a play in high school. He was in Little Women, and he played Laurie. <laughs> Because she was talking about, he was so well-rounded, he was smart, he was in a play, and he, you know, played sports and all that. So, but that's all I know. I don't know anything else other uh-huh. than he was in that. And then you heard he was in Our Town? Or is that what Pepper told you? I think that's what Pepper yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. so I don't, I town. just, I don't really know. But I mean, Dad was well-rounded, and everybody liked him because he had a really charismatic personality, and he was fun, and... Um, I just don't think he had problems making friends anywhere he went. Mm-hmm. You know, he just met people well, and, uh, and you know, it doesn't surprise me. He could probably just decide what he wanted to do and then just go do any direction. Yeah. So, and yeah. he, and, and, uh, but he was kind of held in check by his very strong mother. Like, he knew he couldn't do anything bad, you know? So. <laughs> Like us, you know, (laughs) you're part of a community, you want to be part of this community, you need to be like, you need to do what you're supposed to do. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, here we go. Building its nest. I guess they figured he knew best, so they built the town around him, and they called it Mobile. Alabama. <laughs> they took the swamp land and they headed with steam. steam. And they added people with a dream. And the dream became a heaven by the name of Mobile. Pretty soon the town had grown till they had a slide trombone. And the man who played the piano had a sparrow. Sing soprano! <laughs> so wondering where you should go. It's on the Gulf of Mexico where the southern bells are ringing. Ding, ding. And the climate's ideal. Not really. It's hot as hell. It's a honeysuckle heaven by the name of Mobile. Oh, yeah. <laughs>